Jeffrey Nero Hardy is one of the most universally beloved competitors in pro wrestling history, and although he's had his fair share of lows along the way, very few wrestlers have the unbreakable bond with fans that Jeff has. Musically speaking, Jeff's gyrating journey to the ring is loaded with lots and lots of tunes and twists of fate along the way. So join us now and let's get a little weird as we chronicle the charismatic enigma's career thus far and take a special look behind the themes of Jeff Hardy. Good luck trying to decipher what I am smelling like a rose that somebody gave me on my birthday deathbed actually means. But one thing's for certain, this churning, grungy anthem is a fan favorite song of the alternative metal group Stone Temple Pilots. Growing up as a country boy in rural North Carolina, Jeff and his older brother Matt took their love for professional wrestling to the extreme at a very young age, forming their own wrestling promotions like the Trampoline Wrestling Federation and the Organization of Modern Extreme Grounds. Grappling Arts, or Omega for short, the Brothers Hardy would land enhancement talent gigs for the WWF in the mid-1990s. But in between jobbing themselves out, Matt and Jeff honed their craft by working together in the anything but plush, redneck backwoods of North Kakalaki. And in Omega, Jeff's wild imagination was immediately on display as he unveiled the demon from down under Willow the Wisp his masked, creepy alter ego that would make sporadic appearances throughout his career. Angsty alternative songs like this STP banger help shape Jeff's personality, and it's safe to say that the band's lead singer Scott Weiland and Hardy might be considered similar creatures in some respects. Imagine grabbing a bowl of cereal, or my personal go-to back in the day, which was toaster strudel. Can you say delicioso? And sitting down on Saturday morning to watch an episode of WWE Superstars, when all of a sudden, there are these two red and green ludicrous looking creatures on your TV screen. Well, let me introduce you to Wildo and Ingus Jinx, AKA Jeff and Matt Hardy, in two comical costumes that make the Ding Dongs look like the conquistadors. Sorry, now that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but neither do Wilco and Angus or whatever the heck their names are. Such elaborate and colorful outfits hadn't been seen since a long time ago in a galaxy known as the WWF in 1992, when an intergalactic grappler named Max Moon touched down on planet McMahon, which is ironic considering that both the Jinxes and the Spaceman used the same theme song, which was produced, of course, by the Obi Obi-Wan Kenobi of entrance music, Jim Johnston. This out of this world theme sounds more like it belongs in Donkey Kong Country instead of wrestling. But what's really bananas is the fact that it's also been used by multiple superstars like Luna Vachon and the Jinx's arch nemesis, the Toxic Turtles. And you thought the broken universe was wacky. <laughs> By the dawn of the Attitude Era and with the goofy costumes left at home, Matt and Jeff were beginning to pop up on B-level WWE programming like Shotgun Saturday Night and Sunday Night Heat. With their TV time increasing, the Hardys obtained a new entrance theme titled Chase Manhattan by everyone's favorite big beat band, Freebie and the Bean. No clue. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I hear this song, I'm transported back to playing WrestleMania 2000 on my Nintendo 64, eating Hot Pockets, and trying not to spill my Snapple on my super wide jeans. These matches that they had would lead to the brothers inking full-time WWE contracts, thanks in part to the support of their behind-the-scenes mentor, Mr. Doot 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 himself, Michael P.S. Hayes. Now, the fabulous Freebird always had a preference for the Hardys and just knew deep down inside his fanny pack that the dynamic duo would revolutionize the sports entertainment industry with their high-flying style of hardcore wrestling. In fact, he fancied them so much that he became their on-screen manager for a hot second. However, the elder Hayes came off as the uncool uncle, trying to match fashion with his younger relatives. <laughs> Thank you. 
Loaded by Zach Tempest is a generic piece of stock rock music that will forever be connected to the Hardys entrances both in the WWE and AEW. Now the way this perfect pairing came about behind the themes is that Matt and Jeff needed new music quickly after flip-flopping from face to heel and back face after splitting from Gangrel and their one month union as the new brood. Sort of a happy accident. This Blitzkrieg bopper became synonymous with the boys and they would go on to become even bigger stars than expected once the lovely Lita joined in to complete Team Extreme. Now for us fans growing up during the height of the Attitude Era, Jeff was the crazier spot monkey half of the alternative raver style brother duo. He would jump off of ladders, fall through tables, and steal the show with his high risk offense on a near weekly basis. No longer a scrawny teenager who wrestled his first WWE match when he was only 16 years old. Jeff in particular grew up before our very eyes and before long he helped to elevate a simple ladder match to new heights at No Mercy 1999. And alongside the Dudleys and Edge and Christian, these three teams pioneered the tables, ladders, and chairs match concept. However, his dangerous desire to continually raise the bar and push his body to the limit began to take its toll. Just as the WWE brass decided to break up the Hardys, the Team Extreme nickname turned into a lifestyle and Jeff began to burn out. With his in-ring performance declining due to a poisonous drug addiction, eventually the E had no choice but to release him after he failed a drug test and declined going to rehab. This Marilyn Manson gothic rock song certainly speaks to Jeff's overall well-being at this time in his life. It begins with the backwards message. This is my lowest point of vulnerability. A telling message for someone whose poor choices were slowly squeezing all the goodness out of them. Like most addicts in an altered state of mind, Jeff was in a complete denial phase after his initial release in 2003. Hardy only made a handful of independent appearances before taking an entire year off from wrestling. But before that, he appeared for Ring of Honor at their Death Before Dishonor show. Now Hardy has always been a proven draw amongst the ladies who wouldn't otherwise be interested in pro wrestling. That's just the Kavorka of Jeff Hardy, yeah! And nowhere was this more obvious than during this appearance, where a couple hundred teenage girls showed up to cheer him on while sadly, the ROH bots booed, heckled, and mocked him before, during, and after his match. Marcus, to the top. Before AEW became the place where anything could happen, TNA was the alternative to the E, and in 2004, Hardy made a surprise debut at their second anniversary show to challenge AJ Styles for the X Division Championship. Proving that sometimes absence makes the Hardy grow stronger, the crowd reaction showed his doubters that there's this strange magnetic charisma that draws wrestling fans to Jeff. Look, the guy has always marched to the beat of his own drum, not only inside the squared circle, but especially outside. It. And what helped set him apart and make him a walking, living, breathing piece of art during his runs in TNA was that he was directly involved in all of his entrance themes, performing them in his own words and own original sounds, like the extraterrestrial Space Odyssey song Modest, a tune performed by Jeff and his band Paroxygen. This is quite the self-expressive departure from his WWE character, an out there, offbeat, strange bedfellow, but for me this song was a little too cringe to enjoy. performed by the band and ever after. There's no denying that No More Words and its entrance are one of the best in the industry. When the song hits, you can't help but sing along, gyrate, and flail about like Hardy, and strum your air guitar too. Now around this time, the unpredictable roller coaster phase of Jeff's career was beginning to take shape, and he was unfortunately let go from TNA in 2006 when he no-showed a pay-per-view. After sending the Red Rooster of all people a text message that said, card subject to change, see you Tuesday. Still obviously struggling with his sobriety, Jeff somehow convinced the WWE that he was refocused and rehabilitated. So they then rehired him and he was rechristened the Charismatic Enigma, proving himself to be quite the individual artiste and using the squared circle as his creative canvas. His highlight reel at this time is full of enough awe-inspiring swanton bombs and intoxicating falls off 15-foot ladders through tables to make the jackass boys blush. And Jeff would reach his absolute zenith here, capturing world titles and defeating the likes of Randy Orton, Triple H, and CM Punk before his contract expired, thus ending his three-year stint with the company. Another 
At times, Hardy has proven himself to be his own worst enemy in both the wrestling universe and in real life. It's also been said on more than one occasion that Jeff's excess lifestyle is a double-edged sword. Jumping back and forth between WWE and TNA several times due to his inability to remain clean and sober, his problems reached their pinnacle following his drugged up performance at TNA's Victory Road pay-per-view in 2011. Prior to this main event match versus Sting, Hardy had joined the heel stable known as Immortal, referring to himself now as the Antichrist of professional wrestling. This slow and sinister song called Another Me was the dark and disturbing ditty whose lyrics practically foreshadowed his fall from grace. To say that Jeff was a free spirit in his own psychedelic world would be like saying his brother Matt has a hard time keeping it in his pants, you know? Now in his own words and telling his life story through the lyrics of his own music, with a little help from TNA's music producer Dale Oliver, Hardy was resurrected and he channeled his inner Eminem because he only had one last shot where it was turn out the lights, the party's over, you lose! Good day, sir! It was also around this time when Jeff became like the American Dream Dusty Rhodes at every Starcade in the 1980s because at every annual annual Bound for Glory pay-per-view, Hardy would debut new theme music that basically built on top of each other in a way that only Jeff could understand. Although they all had the same familiar klaxon, air raid, siren sound effect to start the song. After Resurrected, there were similar creatures, Time and Fate, and Placate. Now compared to the WWE, where everything is pretty tightly controlled, Hardy was allowed a lot more creative freedom during his time in TNA. And as he kayfabe quit the company due to his feud with Dixie Carter, a familiar figment of Jeff's insane imagination was about to re-emerge. <laughs> Strange, bizarre, and completely outlandish, this mask alter ego of Jeff's was inspired by mashing together the Marvel comic book universe with Japanese wrestling legend Jushin Thunder Liger. His Will o' the Wisp persona emerged for the first time on the national stage, fully equipped with an evil laugh, puzzling promos, and maniacal monologues. Sauntering down the ramp while twirling a black and white umbrella, this different and demonic version of Jeff felt sort of fresh. But unfortunately, this entrance theme wasn't what you might call poetry emotion. Motion. Rather just emo Jeff Hardy doing emo Jeff Hardy things. Taking the theme music from the cold-blooded, dreadlocked, and drugged-up version 7.829er of Mad Hardy in TNA from 2011 and putting lyrics to it, here you have the Hardy Boys reunion song Reptilian. Now there are daredevils, and then there's Jeff Hardy. The most amazing stuntmen and women in the world could only hope to fill up their portfolios with half of the crazy bumps that Jeff has taken throughout his career. Unfortunately, Dixie Carter couldn't book a Hardys versus Jake the Snake Roberts and Skinner Swamp match However, this theme wouldn't last long because Jeff legit suffered a broken leg in a dirt bike accident and was relegated to a non-physical role. And now, boys and girls, we reach the point of our program where we dive into the realm known as the Broken Universe. Admittingly, this type of nonsense isn't for everyone, especially old-timers like Vinnie Mac who just couldn't wrap their head around the appeal of wrestling a kangaroo named Smoking Joe. But in 2016, we saw the debut of Broken Matt Hardy, who was hell-bent on deleting his brother. This would all build up to the cinematic final deletion, in which Matt would successfully defeat his brother, transforming him into an obedient mule and soulless vessel known as Brother Nero. The Brother Nero character was a more sadistic and violent version of Jeff, whose full throttle thrill seeker ways had been rendered obsolete. Now, if you really sit back and listen to this track, the song's deep and powerful lyrics show just how gifted Jeff is as a lyricist. Because, in my humble opinion, of course, Obsolete is the greatest song that Jeff has ever written.
If you thought the broken universe was bizarre, wait till you get a load of Itchweed with three E's. Proof that the Hardys were batshit crazy and broken long before, one of Jeff's many multiple personalities, the tripping his balls off, fast talking, weed whacking, wielding alter ego, first debuted on Hardy's MySpace page. And this theme music is meh and modestly alien at best. A first ballot WWE Hall of Famer when the time comes, Jeff Hardy has enough things to keep him busy whenever he decides to hang up his mesh shirt and baggy pants. Having just met the charismatic enigma, he is in a great place mentally and physically, and I for one can't wait to see what else he accomplishes in wrestling and in music in the future.